one. There's one Savior. Humans make it complicated. Buddha, Muhammad, how do we get to heaven? How do we have peace? How do we have life? How do we have, there's only one Savior. All of these others that people try to follow, they remain in their tombs. In fact, their bodies have many of them because it's so long ago continued to decay and turn back to the dust, but he didn't stay in the tomb. On the third day he got up because he is who he said he was, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And he is seated high above all principalities and powers and might and dominion. He has a name that is above every name, the name of Jesus. And today, it doesn't matter what you face. And it doesn't matter the sin that's been in your past. And it doesn't matter the enemies that line up against you and say they're going to take you out. Because he is Savior. Because he is King and Lord. If you will declare his name. If you will stand under the fountain of his blood. If you will stand in the power of his blood. I can guarantee you something this morning. I can't guarantee you time. I can't guarantee you facts. But I can guarantee you that you will come out on top. You will come out victorious. You will make it through because He reigns. He lives forevermore. He is the Lord and He's the only Lord. Hallelujah. When Jesus was telling His disciples as He was getting ready to leave, I'm going to prepare in my Father's house. There are many mansions. If it were not so, I wouldn't tell you. I'm going to prepare a place for you that where I am, you will be there also. Thomas was blown away and he was the loud mouth of the bunch at that time. It was either Peter or Thomas. This time it was Thomas. He said, Jesus, we don't know what you're talking about. First of all, we don't know where you're going and we certainly don't know how to get where you're going. Verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, <laughs> I am the life. What was he saying to Thomas? Thomas, you don't have to know all the details. All you have to know is, I am the way. I am the Savior. He's gone to prepare a mansion for every one of us. Don't miss your mansion because the enemy has given you a makeshift life of alternatives that amount to nothing when this life is over. Why would you settle for a makeshift, won't last very long, short satisfaction, sinfulness? Why would you settle for that when God's given you the offer of eternal life? Do you know Him this morning? Are you right with Him? Have you wandered away from Jesus? Can I tell you, He calls you home. There's not many ways, there's one way. And guess what? He doesn't save me and then leave me. Matt, he saves me and he's still there for me if my legs go to paralysis. Brandon, if I get sick with a blood disease that the doctors can't heal, he doesn't save me to leave me. He's still there for me. He didn't save you to leave you. Joyce, he didn't save Connie to leave her. He's the healer of brain cancer. Are you hearing me this morning? One Savior. All you got to do is be able to count to four, not a gazillion. He doesn't ask you to be superhuman, just only human. But know where your help lies too, baptism. My mom taught me that there was one Savior, but she taught me that there was two baptisms. She taught me after being saved that I should follow the Lord in water baptism as the scripture declares. She taught me as she brought me to church and others taught me and I heard in church and I heard from my mom's own mouth, that if I couldn't surrender myself to be baptized in water and obey the Lord in that, could I really surrender my life in every other area? Probably not. Because it's a simple command found in Scripture. Repent and be baptized. Some of you don't know, you're not sure what to do with your life and with the battles that you face and what you go through. Have you committed your heart to Jesus first? Secondly, have you followed the Lord in water baptism? If not, why not? Scared what I look like when people see my hair messed up. Really? Well, you're, I hate to use the word luck. I don't know how else to put it. Um, Larry, somebody built that just a little wrong. I'm not sure. But when you get in the tank, we can't even hardly see you. Or they can. I can, but they can. See, I'm trying to say you don't have to worry about that. But is it really worth disobeying God for anyway? What am I doing when I get baptized anyway? Is it really... You know, when you boil it down, you're just saying yes and surrender to him. If you said, I need to do it, then I'll do it. The water represents a grave. When you go in the water, you're saying, the old me is gone. When you come up out of the water, you're saying, the new me lives in Jesus. 
My mom taught me there was two baptisms. Peter said in Acts 2 verse 38, repent and be baptized. What keeps you from being baptized in water? Is it stubbornness? Is it the fact that you haven't truly repented and given yourself in surrender to Jesus? Ouch. If I didn't love you, I wouldn't preach it right. But my mom taught me there was two baptisms. Acts 10 verse 44 Peter is sent to the Gentiles for the first time up to this point. Believe it or not, I'm almost done. Just punch your neighbor and say, listen closely, he's almost done. (laughs) That's one close and I have two more. Hang on. (laughs) Peter has seen a vision. God put him in a trance, showed him a vision. You say, has that really happened? Well, it did in Scripture. If you read the book of Acts, you'll find this happened to Peter. And he's shown a vision that's given him a message that to not call anything unclean that God has called clean. Up to this point, Peter's only been sharing the message of Christ and a message of hope with the Jewish people. At this point, a messenger from Cornelius' house, which is a Gentile, comes to Peter asking him to please come and share the truth with them. So Peter has the word from God that you need to go. And so Peter goes, he's sharing the message of Jesus with Cornelius' household, the Gentiles, verse 44 says this, and even as Peter was saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon, everybody say upon. All who had heard the message, my mom taught me there were two baptisms, baptism in water, which I should follow Jesus once I was saved. I did that earlier in age as I came to Christ, but I found myself wandering from Jesus and not where I should be about the age of 17, 18. As I rededicated or recommitted my heart, I felt like I should do my first works over. And so I was baptized again at the age of 18. Just to tell the world, you know what? I may have gotten a little off track at the ages of 17, 16, 17, somewhere in there. But I'm back and my life is surrendered and sold out to Jesus. But my mom taught me, not only is that baptism in water, but just like Cornelius' household. Jesus is sh- uh, Peter's sharing these things. You know what these things were? Just about Jesus. Bombshell of heaven. Peter's just telling him he's the way. And as he's doing so, Peter and the Jewish folks that are with Peter, their minds are blown because they watch as the Holy Spirit comes, here it is, upon Cornelius and his whole household. Can I tell you that there's more after salvation? But preacher, I'm scared I might act like you, talk like you, walk. That'd be crazy. I don't want to act like you. Listen, you're still going to be you. Don't be scared of God. He won't do anything bad to you. You say, well, how do I get this Holy Spirit coming upon me? Because baptism in water, it's immersion in water. What's baptism in the Holy Spirit? When you're saved, the Holy Spirit comes on the inside, and He fills you on the inside. You're filled with the Holy Spirit. You're saved. You're right with God. But baptism, He comes upon, and Jesus said in Acts 1 and 8, this would happen for the believers so that they would receive power to be God's witnesses. So He comes upon you to give you power to become heaven's bombshell. Hallelujah. Mm, Where'd all my shouting go? (laughs) So after salvation, he just offers you more. Everybody say more. More. So how do I get this more? All you got to do is reach up to heaven and say, Lord, I want more. Come upon me. There is something about having the Holy Spirit come upon me. I don't know when it happened, but Wednesday night, sometime in the morning hours Thursday, the Holy Spirit came upon me. And when I got up Thursday morning, I knew I was different. And like I shared with you earlier and didn't intend to do so, I text Laura, I said, something lifted, something's different. You can imagine her reply on her text because she's been having to put up with me. Let me just give you a little example. Stay with me. You ladies are going to love this. For the last year and a half to two years, I hate to report to you, but there's been several family outings that I have felt like I've ruined because we would go, we would try to do things, and I would find myself in so much pain and so much agony that finally Laura would catch on, and whatever we were trying to do, we would pack up and we would have to go home. Because I couldn't take it. I'm glad to report to you that yesterday she pulled the wool over my eyes. And I thought we were just going to maybe one, two stores. 
But we must have went to 100 yesterday. I don't know. <laughs> and as God is my witness, it's the first time that we've done something like that. And the whole day, I felt good. I enjoyed myself. I enjoyed my family. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Don't be afraid. Some of you have heard stories. Some of you have even told crazy stuff about, you know, the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit being, when he does this, it's of the devil and all this. Listen, it's just in his word. Verse 45 says, the Jewish believers who came with Peter were amazed, watch this, that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out upon the Gentiles too. And there could be no doubt about it, for they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Verse 46 and 47, then Peter asked, can anyone object to their being baptized now that they have received the Holy Spirit just as we did? So Peter says, just like we did back in Acts chapter 2, now over here in Acts chapter 10, Cornelius and his whole household is receiving what we received. There's more. You don't have to act like me. Be yourself. Let him come upon you. He gives you power. He renews you. So I close with this. My mom taught me there was three healings. Because God created us body, soul, and spirit, she taught me that Jesus bore those stripes so that we could be healed in all three parts. Three healings for your body, for your mind, will, and emotions, and for your spirit. In Luke chapter 8, the woman who had the issue of blood for 12 years, she spent all that she had. Most of you know the story. I'm going to put my Bible down to show you that I really am closing. She spent all that she had. She couldn't find help. A doctor could not fix her. No one could stop the bleeding. But one day, she heard Jesus was passing by, and she broke through the crowd, and she reached out, and she touched him. Some of you don't know what to do, but all that God wants you to do is step out and reach out the best you can in faith and know that he's going to be on the other side of your reaching. And the moment she touched him, Jesus stopped. And he said, who touched me? Peter thought something was wrong with Jesus. What do you mean? A whole crowd is touching you. And Jesus said, no, you don't understand. Someone deliberately touched me. And virtue flowed out. Somebody touched me and had a different kind of touch. Will you reach out and touch him different this morning? One, two. Once out, Savior, two baptisms, three healings, four, eternity. It's all about eternity. He saved me so I could spend eternity with him. I follow him in baptism, and he comes upon me with his spirit. It's all about eternity, not only so I can be there, so I can carry others and help others make it with me. So that someone like my mom, who's been abused and mistreated, can stand before a crowd like you and... Step out in obedience and just let God use her. Because the enemy says you're damaged, but God says you may be weak or you may be fragile. <laughs> but you're not damaged goods. You may be weak, but he's the strength. You may be fragile, but he's the healing to make you strong. It's all about eternity. Will you stand on